unedited because I am currently driving to my Berlin class and I don't have time to do any editing because um, I just got to post it. So I didn't do a video last week because our family had a really hard time last week. Um, I had to leave the birthing class early. My son got sick because he's getting his molars in. Um, and just the, the usual stress and strain of military not paying us correctly and um, just things, just life. So I apologize that I'm not looking at the camera very much, but I am on the highway, so I don't want to get in an accident. Um, so the only things I wanted to talk about really is that I'm getting to the point, I actually had a nesting day. I did not experience nesting with my son at all. Not even like one little tiny bit. And woo! Um, but over the weekend, I actually had like a huge, huge nesting um, urge. And I was talking to my husband about it and I was like, normally I'd be getting, you know, if I were normally nesting, or a pregnant woman is usually nesting, they would be getting up, cleaning everything, going crazy, you know, setting up the nursery, whatever. But we're not living where we're gonna be living when I have the baby. So I can't really set anything up. I can clean, but it's not gonna help anything, you know, for when the baby comes home because we're not gonna be living there. And so I basically just fought the urge all day and didn't do anything and just spent time with my husband instead. Um, but it was hard to explain to him and, and he, a lot of pregnancy hormone things, he's like, yeah, I don't know if I believe that, you know, kind of like a typical man. But this time he's like, oh, I know what nesting is. I guess his, uh, one of his NCOs, um, which for those who are non-military, it's a, basically like a lower manager, um, in the army. So one of his NCOs, I guess, had shown him pictures of his, of the NCO's wife um, cleaning during her nesting phase. And I guess she's one of those women that took like toothbrush to the baseboards and stuff. So he's like, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. And I was like, yeah, I didn't get that with Raj. But um, anyway, so it was only like one day of nesting, but I'm sure that once we move, it's gonna hit me full force and I'm gonna wanna set everything up really quickly. When Raj was born, we had moved at, I think we got our place when I was like 35-ish weeks. And then um, I, we moved when I was 35 weeks is when we got our new place. And then we got our delivery of our stuff like closer to 36 weeks. And then I was working and um, my husband had started going to school. And so we didn't have anything unpacked, like anything. We had our bedroom unpacked and that was basically it. We had camping chairs in the living room. And then all of a sudden at 37 and a half weeks, emergency C-section. So the great thing was that my father-in-law came to help and my husband, the second and third day, I believe that I was in the hospital recovering from the surgery, uh, my husband and his dad went back to our house, which was like 45 minutes, an hour away. And they went back to the house and unpacked everything. They unpacked the entire house. Um, so that was great. I mean, we had the car seat out and everything. Well, not everything. We had the car seat out. That was it. <laughs> um, Roger actually ended up um, co-sleeping with me, so it wasn't really a big deal that we didn't have like a nursery set up or the crib made or anything yet because I had a very difficult In two miles, me. take exit 127 for Washington 512 East toward Puyallup. And so I basically stayed in bed for those two months straight. Every once in a while I could get myself up out of the bed and into like the living room, um, but it didn't happen very often and he definitely stayed with me um, in the bed almost 24 7 and we just I just slept when he slept so literally around the clock when he was awake I'd be awake with him interacting with him even if it was in the middle of the night and then when he slept I slept 
which worked for me because I was in so much pain from the recovery. So some people thought I was crazy, but it worked. Um, anyway, so we didn't really need the nursery and didn't need everything put together and whatnot. But this time when we move, we'll hopefully get our place around 31, 32 weeks. And then I actually have to set it up because Roger's going to be in a separate room and we have to get him used to his separate room and um, get the crib set up for Naminé because if I have my successful VBAC this time, the hope is not to um, not to co-sleep this time and to have Naminé in the crib right away. So that is our hope. But we'll see how it actually goes, whether I have my VBAC or not, and how my recovery is going. You know, she might be in the bed for the first couple of weeks or something. Um, anyway, so that's what I've been thinking about, is like the whole nesting stage and moving. And I'm really nervous because we're down to like seven and a half weeks before we start our move. And I feel like once you get to that eight week point, it's a literal countdown. <laughs> like, I'm not ready for a countdown. There's so many things that aren't figured out. We haven't been approved for our apartment yet. And um, my husband hasn't started applying for jobs yet. And I'm like, this is too soon for a countdown. Um, anyway, and then the other thing I was gonna talk about is I finally decided that since I'm working, I wanted to spend just a little bit of the money that I'm making on treating myself because this pregnancy and this move are so stressful to me because I know how stressful the move was for us last time. We lived in our car for a few days because um, we had nowhere to go. So it was extremely stressful and thinking about it this time around is very stressful. Um, so I have been thinking about it and just really, really stressing about it. And so um, my eye has, both of my eyes separately, have started um, stress twitching. And like that's how stressed out I am. Anyway, so I decided that I am going to treat myself. So I got my nails done and I did that last weekend. And we also got my son's first haircut last weekend, which was rough, but he did a really good job. And then um, we were actually planning on waiting until he was two, but he needed it. His hair is really curly, but like the sides right here that hang from here, sometimes straighten out and get really long and hang like all the way down on his shoulder. <laughs> so we were like, okay, we should probably get a trim. Um, so we got his hair cut. This weekend, I'm gonna go get a pedicure. So I'm really excited. I really wish that I could afford to get massages in addition to like the chiropractic stuff that I'm doing because the chiropractic stuff is more clinical like something I have to do but I would love to treat myself with massage <laughs> but I can't so that's just how it is anyway so that's what's going on right now I don't know if I've mentioned before I don't think so because the last two videos were kind of different um I have started getting my nausea back it's not anywhere near what it was before, but in the mornings I get nauseous and then sometimes in the middle of the day I get nauseous and I find that I get indigestion a lot easier. Um, but no big deal, it's nothing like it was before. The other thing I wanted to say is that um, a lot of people on my online birth club right now are talking about um, their baby's position and they're all worried about it, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm 23 weeks, okay? Baby does not stay in the same place at 23 weeks. I can feel literally within the same hour or two her move around to where she's kicking me in the cervical-ish area to where I can feel it like all in the bottom, like on my pelvic floor area. And then all of a sudden she'll be kicking me on my right side or my left side and then she'll be kicking me up near my... Um, belly button or kicking me kind of in the middle like right now she's kicking me probably about two inches or so above my surgical scar so I mean I don't understand why people are so worried your uterus doesn't even take up your whole uh, abdominal ab 
abdominal cavity yet. So no need to worry about that. But I am hoping, really, really, really hoping, fingers crossed, that she comes head down when it's time because I don't want to have to get another surgery for a breech baby. But I'm also going to be... Um, of course, I'm continuing the chiropractic care, and I'll be doing the Webster technique if I have to. And um, and then in addition to that, if I have to do like spinning babies or something, I didn't know about spinning babies before, so I'll do that this time. Anyway, so I am going to my birthing class alone this time. I'm kind of sad, but there's good reason behind it and I'm a little worried that I might not get as good of a takeaway because I might be focused on being alone but I'm gonna try and um, anyway that's really I mean that was a lot of stuff but that's all that's going on right now so uh, I'm really excited for the next steps coming up that I'm gonna share about my VBAC prep um, some of which I've already started partially but not completely so looking forward to those videos. I will talk to you guys later. If any of you guys have any questions about what's going on with my VBAC prep, how everything is going, how we're handling this move, anything like that, um, just let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe if you'd like to join us on our journey toward having a successful VBAC. And you guys have a great weekend. I'll talk to you next week.